staff at the end, but uh, I want to introduce Ms. Jeannie Hayes, my administrative assistant. Been with Gonzaga for 14 years. She's the brains behind the organization. If you ever need to know what's going on, Jeannie absolutely knows. She's got to go prep the reception that will immediately follow this, so I wanted to hit her before she left. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, as you can see or can't see, my name is Alex Dean. Uh, I'm a junior here at Gonzaga this year, and I'm going to talk to you about Airborne School. The, uh, the school for those of you who don't need to hold on to something when you jump out of an aircraft. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what is Airborne, you might ask? Well, it's a three-week course uh, in Fort Benning, Georgia, and the ultimate goal is they want to take an individual and train them to become a team member and a paratrooper. And the cool thing about being a paratrooper is, is they can go places and, and really fast and get there where regular infantry can't get and can't do. So, you know, they can get in and around and surround the enemy and, you know, just smash them, whereas regular infantry can't get. So that's the point of uh, Like I said, it's a three-week course, uh, and they break each week into a certain amount of training. So the first week's called ground week. Pretty much sums it up in the name. You're on the ground for the whole week. Uh, you learn the ins and outs of the harness. It's your life support system. You know, that's what keeps you alive up there. Uh, you learn all, how to buckle up everything, how to put it on, how to take it off, how to fold it up nice, how to put it away. Uh, and then, uh, once you get that done, once you've got it mastered and they, and they test you on that, you move on to learn how to fall. You spend the whole rest of the ground week learning how to fall. They make it sound a lot fancier, though. Uh, they call it a PLF, or parachute landing fall. Uh, it's still falling. Uh, and you just, all week, you're just learning how to fall correctly, keeping your feet and knees together so you don't hurt yourself. Uh, then you get the weekend. Five points of What's that? Five points of contact. Uh, your uh, heel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> one five, five. that's all you need. Uh, so then you get the weekends off. You get liberties on the weekend, which is great because uh, the National Infantry Museum is right off uh, Fort Benning. So you can go check that out. Uh, Fort Benning is home of the infantry, so you can go and uh, look around all the all the cool stuff they've got there. And once the weekend's over, move on to week two, which is Tower Week. Also kind of self-evident in the name. You, you're spending time in towers. There's two different types of towers, though, at the United States Army Airborne School. There's the 34-foot tower and the 250-foot tower. Most everybody spends all their time on the 34-foot tower, which is awesome because it's basically a big, giant suspension line. You go up a 34-foot tower, and these wires come down, and you jump out and slide down the wires. It's, it's a lot of fun. The whole point of the training is is just to get yourself ready to exit that airplane and, and what to expect on the way out. The reason it's 34 feet is some doctor somewhere at some point in time decided if you can jump out of 34 feet, you can jump out of 1,250 feet. <laughs> Worked for me, so I guess it's, it's all good. Once you qualify on the 34 foot tower, you do it like 20 times. Uh, you, you have to do several other apparatuses, and once, once you get it going on all those, and if you're lucky enough, you can do the 250 foot tower which is a, a blast. It's a big circus ride. It's a 250 foot tower with a giant crane on it, and they lift you up, and then they drop you. And, and it's a free fall for, with a parachute for 250 feet. And it's awesome because it's, it's an accumulation of everything you've learned over the two weeks. It's a huge confidence booster for what you're going to experience the next week. Uh, and getting out of that, uh, week three, jump week. It's like air assault, phase three. It's the cool one. That's the fun one. It's, what, it's the pinnacle that you train for. Uh, also self-evident in the name. You jump out of planes. Five times. They call us the five jump chumps. That's what you have to be to be airborne qualified to get your wings. One must be at night and one must be combat load. So the regular load they call Hollywood. And that's just your parachute on your back, your reserve parachute. The combat load, you have a rifle under your arm and down your leg and a big rucksack. So you can wild out the door. Jump out of an airplane. <laughs> have a controlled fall. Some people call it a jump out of a perfectly good airplane. There's no such thing as a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> so like I said, you have to do five jumps, and uh, then uh, you graduate. And a lot of people pull different things away, like, oh, jumped out of an airplane, man. You know, yeah, I pulled that away too, but I got other things. I got, but two biggest things for me were brotherhood and the historical aspect of it. The guys I met down there, I mean, we were doing stuff that you don't usually do with other people. You don't have planes with them, right? You know, so you kind of got this bond, you know, and it was really, it was really a bummer to leave and have to leave all your buddies. Uh, but I mean, it was a really cool experience, good army experience. Uh, and, and as I said, the historical aspect, you know, you, you become a paratrooper. You're part of this, this elite group that anywhere you go, if somebody knows or finds out that you're airborne or anything like that, I mean, instantly that contact's been made, they know something about you, it, you can go anywhere and that, that contact can be made. That being said, for those of you who are interested in jumping out of an airplane, 
which I recommend. It's the same as aerosol. It's based off the order of merit list. You have to work hard, and it starts now. Uh, parents, don't worry about it. You know, it's, it's perfectly safe. <laughs> I survived, so you know, it's got to say something. Uh, it, it's, it's an awesome experience. Uh, I felt like I, I grew so much as a person. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, I, I look at a test, and I'm like, Psh, I took that on an airplane. I can take this test. <laughs> Whatever. So that's all I've got for you. Uh, any questions? No? All right. Well, I will be followed by none other than the man himself, that major step. Hi, I'm Cadet Spencer Schulte, and I'll be talking about LDAC, or Leadership Development Assessment Awards. Uh, LDAC is a culminating event of R ROTC. It occurs after your third year in ROTC, so you have a lot of time to get trained up for the event. Everything that we do here, uh, you'll be assessed on at LDAC. So we'll go out and we'll do PT, and the reason why is because we're going to do a PT test at LDAC. And this one PT test, it, you know, it's worth so much. You train and train, and we'll, we'll fix you guys up so that when you get to LDAC, you'll be ready to go. As I said, it takes place in, after the third year of ROTC, during the summer. It's 29 days long, and it takes place in Fort Lewis, Washington, which is just south of Seattle. Every cadet from across the country, so it doesn't matter where you're from, what program you're with, you will go to LDAC. And you must graduate from LDAC in order to become a commissioned officer in the United States Army. At LDAC, you'll be tested in things such as physical fitness, land navigation, field training exercises, first aid, and a bunch of other stuff. But those are the, those are the main events. Uh, the best thing you can do to prepare yourself for, for LDAC is to take the training you do seriously here. You know, go to class, get good grades, and that will set you up, really, for LDAC. The instructors we have are top-notch. We have a great program here. Uh, we're well-respected by other programs from across the nation. And proof of that is this past year we sent 24 cadets to LDAC. From those 24, nine got overall E's. So we're graded as either excellent, satisfactory, or not satisfactory. And nine out of 24 of our cadets were graded as excellent. Nationwide, only I, I believe 17% of the nation was graded as excellent. And we, we got something like 39% as excellent. So we will. It doesn't matter what your talent level is. If you take the training seriously, we're going to train you up so that you can get that excellent grade, and that's huge. If you want to be, if you want, you know, your fellow cadets to respect you and to look up to you, then you want to work hard and get that E. Also, we had six cadets who were graded as top five in their platoon. A platoon is approximately 40 to 45 people, and we had six cadets out of our 24 as graded in the top five. That's that's quite difficult to do. There's a lot of good cadets. We had eight cadets who got a 270 on the PT test, which is out of 300. And we had six cadets who got a 300. So we had six cadets. Uh, a third of our cadets got a perfect score on the PT test. Uh, once more, uh, with the PT, when you show up on the first day of PT, you're going to suck at push-ups. There's going to be a couple of you who are good. But you're going to suck, take it seriously, do a lot of push-ups, work hard on your own, and do well, do well. Also, we had seven cadets who got Ricondo. Ricondo is just basically summed up as you did well at every event that they test you on at LDAC. However, you know, while it's daunting, it's this ominous month of training after your junior year, uh, don't stress about it. You have three years to train, and we have a great, great program that will train you well. Are there any questions? If not, I will be followed by Cadet William Wilson. Hey everyone, uh, I'm William Wilson. I'm a junior at Whitworth University. Uh, real quick, um, uh, if there's anyone here who's uh, been to Whitworth, there's going to Whitworth, there will go to Whitworth, if you'd uh, raise your hand real quick. So. Alright, just for those of you who don't know, Whitworth is located uh, seven miles uh, north of Contact, about a 15 to 30 minute drive to pick up traffic. Alright, so about Three years ago, I was looking for a college, just like you guys were. And I wanted something that was small, uh, was private, had a liberal arts education. I uh, had a good foundation on uh, Christian ethics. I had a really good sense of community. That's exactly what I found at Woodworth. It's a small school, about 2,900, okay, 60 graduate and undergraduate programs. All right, um, it's, uh, the education is based off of mind and heart. It's uh, associated with the Presbyterian Church, and uh, it's a very strong community. 
up there what we thought. The one thing at the time, uh, I didn't know what we had in our ROTC program, and that was until uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alan Patty gave me a call and informed me otherwise, and invited me to come check out that, the, the program here. And uh, I'm hooked. I, I love it. I love uh, going to Woodworth. I love uh, being with our ROTC program at, that's affiliated with Gonzaga. It's excellent. Now, um, there's a couple of advantages, I think, to going to Woodworth. Uh, number one, we're pirates. We're a mascot. You know, you got to put a cow. Uh, number two, we got a football team. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, you know, three, uh, you know, we're on a beautiful campus. It's uh, 200 acres, uh, surrounded by pine trees. So if you guys just kind of want to get away, you know, come on Twitter, we'll check it out. Okay, and uh, number four, and probably, I think, uh, one of the greatest advantages is we have a, a really big sense of community. There. Um, between uh, students and professors, I know uh, uh, all my professors. I go uh, have coffee with my talk with even professors that I don't have classes with. Uh, uh, you know, even uh, students and RCC cadets, uh, we're very well respected up at Whitworth. You know, even uh, John Zagger people that come up there and check it out. We're, you know, people are always friendly to us, they always smile. And, um, you know, between uh, our small group at Whitworth, uh, we're very close. Uh, we have breakfast every other day together. We have dinner together. We go hang out. We do things. You know, uh, we carpool, and um, you know, we just look out for each other. Make sure everyone's squared away. You know, someone's hurt or someone's injured. You know, we try to take care of them. Someone's struggling with grades. You know, we try to take care of them. There's a couple of disadvantages, though. Not many. Uh, Problem number one is, is the drive. Uh, we're cadets. You know, to be here, we got to wake up a little bit earlier, or we got to, you know, sometimes even leave classes a little bit earlier to make it. And uh, probably secondly is. Uh, you know, we're small. There's, there's only 20 of us or so up there at Whitworth. So, so there's not a lot. And, and we're up there at Whitworth. We don't have uh, the direct, you know, Gonzaga, Bulldog, Italian all the time up there with us. So sometimes, it's, you know, we can feel a little bit uh, on our own up there. But, you know, uh, we, we overcome these challenges. I mean, the, you know, what you can consider disadvantages. You know, if they're a strong community, we carpool everywhere we go. You know, we just uh, we work hard and uh, we try to include ourselves with Gonzaga as much as we can by uh, doing barbecues. So uh, if, if there's a couple things that I want you guys to take away, you, you know, you fresh, you fresh in here. Um, you know, obviously there's not, uh, our school doesn't start until September 6th, so there's not a lot of, uh, we're with freshmen here. But if you guys, you know, when you guys get here, and you guys don't be trained, you guys are going to get to know each other, and then there's going to be some Whitworth guys coming in. So, like, you know, you guys uh, see a new guy, probably Whitworth, you know, a new guy or new girl, you know, just uh, take your time, introduce yourselves. Um, you know, you, you know, I think, Everywhere we really like to get to know other people and be friendly, okay? And just, uh, you know, just take your time to say hi. And then, you know, uh, so we like to goof off a little bit. We like to have fun, okay? You know, but, uh, you know, also with that, you know, we're serious. You know, we, we do the same things as contact. We take ourselves seriously. Okay, we work hard. Okay, we're going to put forth the effort. You know, we're, we, we want to be just like, you know, our, our brothers, our family here at Gonzaga. Okay? You know, we each want to do our best. So just like you guys. Now, uh, if you want to make friends and work, just uh, you know, bring your frisbee up there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love frisbee, so, so uh, yeah, that's just a good way. Is there, does anyone have any questions? All right. I'll now turn uh, my time over to Lieutenant Lutzis. Thank you.